Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is August 14th, 2020. Uh, this is Bible study is going to be on the Temple of Doom. No, it's not Indiana Jones. But the Temple of Doom. There's in the times past, King Solomon built a temple. And the Levites, the tribe of Levi, was the ones that were to serve in the temple. And then in the days of Babylon, they took, destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, took Judah into captivity for 70 years, and then under uh, Cyrus and Darius, or Darius, they allowed Judah to, along with the tares, to return to Jerusalem and to rebuild, which you can read in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Then uh, Jerusalem was taken over by the Parthians. That's not in the Bible. But then in the days of Christ, it was the Romans. So the temple was the place of worship in the days of Christ, but it was controlled by a Roman stooge by the name of King Herod, who, according to the Jewish historian Josephus, he was of Esau, Edom, an Edomite. And he was the one that spent a lot of time and money building the temple. My opinion, not to honor the Lord, no, but to control the worship to control what was taught in the temple. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at Luke chapter 1. Now, I could make a multi-hour study on just the Old Testament and the temple worship, but let's just say that... Uh, I don't want to do it. Let's just stick with the King, uh, the King James Bible, the New Testament, starting in Luke chapter 1. For, verse 1, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most sure, surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now remember, Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. Mary was a Levite. Mary carried the tabernacle of God in her womb, named Jesus. Verse 6. So, uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth. Okay, verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and both were now well stricken in years. In other words, they were old, like me. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. I guess you could call that holy smoke, right? 
And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Guess what? I'm not sure if it's the same angel, but an angel came to Mary and said he would call his name Jesus. So where do they get off with this Yeshua HaMashiach stuff? Huh? Can you tell me? If an angel of God named Jesus, Jesus, what Bible authority does anybody have to change it? Uh, zero, none. And if you want to read that, you can read it in the first chapter of Matthew, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Uh, the angel might have been talking to Joseph here. I'm not exactly 100% sure without, you know. Oh, here we go. Luke 131. The angel was speaking to Mary. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. Not Yeshua HaMashiach. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many, many shall rejoice at his birth. Uh, not all, many. Yeah. To many, John was a thorn in the side. Verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Can you imagine that being born of the Holy, uh, having the Holy Ghost, even from your mother's womb? And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before them in the spirit and power of Elias, of Elijah. That's the Greek rendering to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. Oh, this, you know, you know, angel, you just don't get it. Me and the wife, we're old. We can't have children anymore. Don't you know anything? That's the Bob commentary there. Verse 19. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, shalt, uh, thou shalt be dumb and not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. Oh, yeah. And the people waited for Zechariah and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his own ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. All right, so Joseph was of the house of David. He was a, 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 of the house of Judah. And the virgin's name was Mary. So Mary was a Levite. Joseph was of David, 
of Judah. Verse 28, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, for the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Salutation is just a greeting. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach? No. And shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She's, see, she's, there's a difference between saying, Oh, well, we're too old. We can't have children. Impossible. Gabriel, you don't know what you're talking about. No, but Mary's, Mary's saying, um, but I've never been with a man. How's this, how is this going to happen? Now, she's not saying it's impossible. She's just ha asking, how, is, how are you going to make, how is this going to happen? There's a difference between questioning God in faith asking how something can come to be and saying uh-uh that that can't happen because we're too old there's a difference i hope you see the point point. and the angel verse 35 and the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month of her, who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Wow. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And, uh, and whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of these things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength to his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath set empty away. He hath holpen his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, to his seed forever, and a Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time come that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him 
Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have be called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them, and all these things were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? Well, guess what? Twenty some odd years later, maybe they found out, right? What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. Enemies! You think the Lord wants to save everybody? You think the Lord wants to save the enemies of his people? I don't think so, people. I don't think so. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him in all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel.